Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Usma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 30th of June. Thousands march in India's Udaipur to demand protection for Hindus after Taylor slaughtered. Pakistan's junior foreign minister calls for easing sanctions on Afghanistan. And IMF deals his progress in Sri Lanka amid deepening fuel crisis. And now for all the details. A massive landslide hit a remote area near a railway construction site in India's northeastern Manipur state on Thursday, killing at least seven people and more were feared dead or trapped till the last reports came in. Rescue operations continued to find any survivors. The toll was likely to rise further. A massive landslide following heavy rainfall struck a remote area near the Tupul Yar railway construction site in India's northeastern Manipur state on Thursday, killing at least seven people and dozens were feared dead. Rescue workers involved in finding out survivors had pulled out at least 19 people from the rubble till the last reports came in, but officials said the likelihood of it was thin. The dead toll is expected to rise. Manipur Chief Minister Biren Singh visited the landslide hit area to oversee the rescue operations. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said on Twitter that he was in touch with the authorities and assured all help from the central government. Because uh, of this unfortunate incident, more bodies are also expected. It is not exactly known uh, how many people are buried, but as of now, uh, we are told that there are still six zero, 60 people, including the villagers as well as the army people and uh, the railway people, laborers and all. Unprecedented rains have lashed India's northeastern states for the past three weeks, killing more than 100 people in Assam state and displacing millions. Meanwhile, the first monsoon shower in Indian capital New Delhi and its adjoining areas brought much-needed respite from hot weather. However, Commuters face problems as they battle traffic snarls and water logging. The weather department has issued a rain alert for Delhi till 2nd of July. Thousands of people marched through the Indian city of Udaipur on Thursday, many holding Hindu saffron flags and placards demanding protection for Hindus after two Muslim men videoed themselves slaying a Hindu tailor in the city earlier this week. Rajasthan's Chief Minister Ashok Gehloth, who visited the family of the tailor, said, We will ensure that the guilty gets punished. Thousands of demonstrators in the India's northwestern state of Rajasthan defied a police ban on public gatherings and marched in protest on Thursday, two days after two Muslims posted a video claiming responsibility for killing a Hindu tailor, Kanaya Lal Teli, in the city of Udaipur. Protesters in Udaipur waved saffron flags and chanted slogans demanding justice for Kanhaiya Lal Teli. Teli was beheaded inside his shop on June 28, allegedly for posting content in support of suspended leader of India's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party, Nupur Sharma, whose remarks about profit earlier this month triggered domestic and international outrage. Rajasthan's capital Jaipur also saw rallies by the ruling BJP, who called for a strike as shops remain shut. On the other hand, in southern Hyderabad city, members of hardline Hindu groups, Vishu Hindu Parishad and Bajrang Dal demanded a strict punishment for the accused. Rajasthan Chief Minister Ashok Gehloth, who visited Slain Taylor's house and met his family members, said, we will ensure that the guilty get punished, as he appealed for calm. He urged anti-terror agency NIA to punish the guilty within a month. Yash, son of Kanahiya Lal, said the family has demanded security from the chief minister. We have our self-defense to ask that we have to give protection to our father, so we have to get protection. 
तो आ, इसका भी तो आश्वासन तो दिया है और और बाकी का ये है कि जिन लोगों ने ऐसा कुछ किया है उनको तो फांसी की सजा से कम कुछ होना ही नहीं चाहिए मीन वाइल फोर मेंबर एन आई टीम दैट रीच उदयपुर लास्ट नाइट इज इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग द इंसिडेंट Preliminary investigation into the incident revealed that one of the two prime accused had links with the Pakistan-based Dawat-e-Islami organization. The prime accused was produced before the Udaipur District and Sessions Court on Thursday. Moving on, India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval on Thursday chaired the first meeting of the multi-agency Maritime Security Group and underscored that the Indian Ocean region is a great asset to India and it is important to protect it and be vigilant. In the changing geopolitical scenario, the Indian Ocean, which has been an ocean of peace, is gradually becoming competitive, he said, adding that New Delhi sees the potential of having a clash of interests there. Calling for seamless coordination among various agencies, he said that seas have become much more important in view of geopolitical developments. He further added that India also has a responsibility towards its neighbours, be it disaster management or security. With the cardinal principle of security, our vulnerabilities are directly proportional to our assets, he said. The more we develop, the more... Uh, assets that we create on on our shores, in our coastal states, in our this thing, the more our trade and economy develops further, the more there is an expansion of the India's strategic and security interests beyond its frontiers, the greater would be its vulnerability and the greater would be the need for security. In news from Pakistan. Pakistan's junior foreign minister Hina Rabbani Khar has called for an easing of Western sanctions against the Taliban rule of Afghanistan, saying they have endangered the country's economy. She said we must not promote famine as Afghanistan faces a worsening humanitarian situation. Pakistan's junior foreign minister Hina Rabbani Khar has called for an easing of Western sanctions against Afghanistan under the Taliban government, saying the basic function of the Afghan economy must not be endangered. The Taliban takeover last year after withdrawal of international forces prompted foreign governments led by the United States to cut development and security aid, and the strict enforcement of sanctions has debilitated the Afghanistan's banking sector pushing the country further into economic collapse. The UN says more than half of Afghanistan's 38 million people face hunger. In an interview with Germany's Welt newspaper published on Thursday, Khar said, We must not promote famine. How is it that we spend 3 trillion US dollars on the war, but today don't even have 10 billion dollars on Afghan survival? I don't understand this behavior, she added. Khar said the Western troop withdrawal from Afghanistan in which Germany was also involved had serious repercussions because it was not preceded by a negotiated solution, calling on Germany to play an active political role in easing sanctions. Earlier this month, Germany's Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock during her visit to Pakistan said that her country will not recognize the Taliban as the legitimate rulers as long as dire conditions persist tying recognition to the Taliban, ensuring human rights, especially with regards to women being allowed to work and girls to attend school. She said Germany will, however, continue to provide humanitarian aid to the crisis-hit Afghans. In news from Sri Lanka, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, reported constructive talks with Sri Lankan authorities on Thursday, raising hopes it could soon grant preliminary approval for a credit facility to alleviate a crisis in which the country is struggling to pay for imports. The global money lender, in a statement, said Sri Lanka needs to whittle down existing debt to sustainable before it can receive any aid. Since revenue was weak, far-reaching tax reforms were urgently needed. The financial crisis is the worst in decades for the island nation of 22 million people, which has defaulted on some foreign debt. With little money available for imports, the country has dangerously low fuel reserves. The government on Tuesday restricted allocations to essential services such as trains, buses and the health sector for two weeks.
The IMF said other challenges that needed addressing include containing rising inflation, attending to severe balance of payments pressures, reducing the country's vulnerability to corruption and undertaking growth enhancing reforms. Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepali farmers face a shortage of fertilizers during the peak harvest season that could reduce food availability and incomes. But the silver lining is that the Himalayan nation is trying to purchase fertilizers from India through a government-to-government -government agreement. On the slopes surrounding Nepal's capital Kathmandu, Gopal Kafle, a farmer, was busy preparing his field to transplant paddy saplings. His was for the time being, have been warded off as he was able to secure a sack of fertilizer before the price shot up owing to the shortage. Nepali farmers have been suffering endlessly due to recurrent shortage of fertilizers ahead of key paddy planting season. With an acute shortage of fertilizers, the harvest for the season could dwindle further, slashing incomes, increasing fear of food shortage and increased inflation. The agricultural sector of the Himalayan nation contributes to about 25% of the national economy, further employing about 60% of the workforce of Nepal. But the broken supply chain of fertilizers and black marketing at the time of need has added on to owes to a slow growth rate and high inflation, leading to possible stagflation. Mahendra Rai Yadav, Minister of Agriculture and Livestock Development, earlier claimed of making efforts to procure fertilizer through a government-to-government -government deal with India after the state-run companies failed to make timely imports mainly due to high costs. As per the agreement, India has promised to send a shipment of 50,000 tons of urea and 30,000 tons of diammonium phosphate by mid-July as a crisis-mitigating measure. As per the Nepal government's official figures, fertilizer price has swelled four to five-fold within a year and the government would need more than 70 billion rupees for subsidies to fulfill the farmers' demands. The government had set aside 15 billion rupees to import chemical fertilizer. But at current prices, the money will be barely enough to buy 200,000 tons. A 43-day annual Hindu pilgrimage Amarnath Yatra has begun in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir amid unprecedented security arrangements after a gap of two years due to the coronavirus pandemic. Thousands of pilgrims undertake this divine journey to Amarnath Cave located in the upper reaches of the Himalayas where a natural ice shivling, a phallic representation of Lord Shiva, forms every year. The 43-day-long annual Amarnath Yatra pilgrimage to the Holy Cave Shrine dedicated to Hindu god Lord Shiva began from both Baltal and Nunwan base camps in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday. Thousands of pilgrims from across the country undertake this divine journey to Amarnath Cave located in the upper reaches of the Himalayas at an altitude of 3,800 meters, where a natural ice shivling a phallic representation of Lord Shiva forms every year. Pilgrims express their happiness and excitement about the pilgrimage, which is taking place after a two-year hiatus due to coronavirus pandemic. They also appreciated the unprecedented security arrangements that have been made to ensure the journey remains incident-free. और बहुत ही अच्छा लग रहा है इधर का जो वातावरण है बहुत ही अच्छा है और लोकल सपोर्ट प्रशासन का भी बहुत ही अच्छा पुख्ता इंतजाम है सुरक्षा के इंतजाम भी हम जब से जम्मू से निकले हैं तब से सीआरपीएफ के जवानों ने हमें बहुत ही अच्छा सहयोग दिया है और सिक्योरिटी के लिए Earlier, Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha, who performed the first ritual online, after which the gates of the holy cave were thrown open for pilgrims, said, I have full faith that by the grace of Lord Shiva, the journey will be successful. Security has been tightened in the region, with special emphasis on the use of over 100 sniper dogs on the vehicle routes heading towards the shrine to ensure safe pilgrimage amid heightened terror threats. The pilgrimage will culminate on August 11, coinciding with Raksha Bandhan or Sibling Festival. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.